Uh, Mike Waldron has been doing amateur stand-up comedy off and on for more than 20 years. And have opened mics and talent shows from Bozeman to Phoenix to Denver to downtown Livingston. Inspired by Whoopi Goldberg, Bobcat Goldwyn, and Jake Johansson's HBO comedy specials of the late 80s and early 90s, he's adopted and adapted their storytelling format and has had great success with it. A Livingston resident and a fandom man, Mike is a professional software developer in Bozeman. Don't move against him. In his free time, ladies and gentlemen, Mike Walden. Talking. <laughs> so 
So anyway, yeah, I like to sprinkle my speech before bed when I can get away with it. Uh, I think I like salt on your dinner, like salt and steak and mashed potato, it really brings out the flavor. And a whole bunch of salt, like a big pile of it, like so your kids don't screw the salt shake with it because it's it for Fool's Day. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> There are some comedians who work like this. One in particular who, I don't want to name names, but his initials are, um, well, Penn Jillette. <laughs> um, whenever I see this guy talk, I end up just getting distracted by the number of times he says fuck. <laughs> I'll sit there and actually count. I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> and at the end of a 10 minute bit, he said fuck 147 times. <laughs> People tell me he's funny, I have no idea. I just know he swears a lot. <laughs> So you can easily overdo it, and I try to avoid that. Um, as you heard in the introduction, I'm a local resident. I've been married 18 years. My wife and I are raising our three kids. I have a good job. I pay my taxes. I mow my lawn occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> and I even coach T-ball here in Livingston. Basically, I'm an all-around good guy. I just like to say fuck once in a while. <laughs> so mom, I don't want to see any post. This is really the big stand. Because if it's not obvious already, I really don't give a shit about Mrs. Bartleby. <laughs> and that 85-year-old gym, that Jimmy, that motherfucker needs to get off of that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, now that you kind of know me and I still don't know you, let's go ahead and get started. Um, back in 1959, there was a musical that came out. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's become part of the uh, pop culture American landscape. It was called The Sound of Music. Okay. And in The Sound of Music, 1959, version of the, uh, the movie Frozen, and the song, A Few of My Favorite Things, 1959 version of Do You Want to Go to Snowman? And I'm sure you've heard the song about something like this. Rain drops on the roses, and the skin is on the kitchen. Like comfort kessels and hang on the aprons. And some other things like, holy god, damn, it's a catchy. Wow, Roger and Hammerstein was a genius. I should keep going for a little bit. Brown paper package is tied up in the stream. These are two of my favorite things. Fuck it up, fuck it up, fuck it up, fuck it up. All right, back to the jokes. So, a few of my favorite things. I don't really go into that. Shit. I prefer instead to make a list of things that piss me off. <laughs> and because I don't write these things down, I have to continually go over them in my head. <laughs> because I would hate to forget about anything that pisses me off. <laughs> so I go over them, and I go over them. Some people would say obsessively. And after a while, my stomach is so acid I can't even eat my food. <laughs> and I can't sleep at night, and it really starts to suck. <laughs> And if I can be totally honest with you for just a minute, it's cost me a great deal, both personally and professionally. <laughs> but the good news for us tonight is the things I hate are funnier than the things I like. <laughs> so for example, I love crab apples. Why do I love crab apples? Because they take me back to my childhood. Quick show of hands, who here had my childhood? <laughs> oh, it's just me. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> So I love crab apples. They make me very happy. I'm not going to talk about that tonight because they're not funny. <laughs> what we are going to talk about is puns. I hate puns, and I think my hatred of puns started when I was a freshman computer science student. Back at Montana State University in 1992, I lived in the dorms with my fellow computer science students. <laughs> And we lived in the dorms together, we ate in the dining hall together, we were basically together all the time. And if you're not picking up a five, I'm laying down when I say computer science to me. And that tone of voice, when I push on my glasses, they're not really there. What I'm saying is we were some unsocialized dorks. <laughs> all right, we were the guys, the other guys would beat up. Now, when they weren't beating us up, they were out working their hot rods or dating girls, or I don't know, really know. I was in wedding, this is just what I really <laughs> Me and my buddies were in the basement somewhere programming computers. So anyway. We would eat supper together, and every night at supper, these kids would drag out these puns. Every night, 50 or 60 nights in a row, we heard these puns, and finally one night I said, guys, 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 we have to do the puns every night. Maybe we can take a break for one fucking night. I'm just going to throw that out there. 
The guy sitting across the table from me, his name is Sean. What should I forget Sean? What Sean? He looked at me and he said, What? Don't you like punishment? And I thought, I'm going to stab this motherfucker. I did it for a couple of reasons. Number one, he was my friend, and I thought that might affect our relationship. They're so touchy, you never know what's going to irritate them. And number two, I got to use the arms, and I wasn't sure how successful I was going to be. So I dispensed with the whole fork in the eye plan, and I said, no, seriously, listen to me. This is the thing right here. You guys only have six puns, literally six puns, and I didn't use the word pun. <laughs> and John, who was sitting next to Sean, said, that's punny. I don't remember that name. And I said, that's number four. Now we've got number one. we got number four. Now we just need two, three, five, six, and our evening will be complete. I have been told, it's been suggested to me, that understanding puns, appreciating puns, and making puns requires an advanced intelligence and an advanced grasp of the English language. Horseshit. <laughs> it's just basic pattern catching, and I can prove it to you. Here's a dumbass joke. Why don't witches have babies? Why? Because their husbands have Halloweenies. <laughs> Oh, 
And uh, when I was in seventh grade, the old Metallica released an album called Master of Puppets, and it changed my life. <laughs> I loved that sound. I wanted to hear that sound. I wanted to surround myself with that sound. It was almost like a drug. And because I didn't have an instrument, didn't know how to get an instrument, I had no idea how to start playing or how to get started on that path, and I grew up broke, broke. I didn't even have a walk. I would frequently go around in my spare time and be going, <laughs> Basically making the sounds from the album with my voice. But I ran into an immediate problem. I could only do one part at a time. If I was going to do the drums, I couldn't do the guitar. If I was going to do the guitar, I couldn't do the words. And I had this general idea of where maybe I should get four or five other guys who share this interest. And we could get together, we each take a part, and make the sounds of our voices. And if we do it right, it might sound kind of cool. Well, it turns out there's a whole genre of music that does exactly this. It's called rock and roll, and it fucking sucks. <laughs> I didn't know this until uh, late in my, well, later in my life, in my mid 20s in Denver, I had a friend who was in an acapella group. <laughs> and one night he invited my wife and I to come see his show. We were like, yeah, we'll go to your show, whatever. I regret to inform you they did not own the Master of Puppets. <laughs> They opened the song by Abba called Take a Chance on Me. <laughs> it goes something like this. You can change your mind, ba -ba -da, ba -ba -da, first in line, ba -ba -da, ba -ba -da, maybe I'm still free, ba -ba -da, ba -ba -da, take a chance on me. <laughs> and about the second time the chorus came around, I realized I made a huge mistake, and I was like, stop. Oh, stop, I did it. But they didn't stop for like an hour. <laughs> Felt like five hours. <laughs> and so I had to retreat to my safe space, which for me was, especially through the bathroom, you're going to see, it's going to make counts on the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> on my breath. And at the end of the show, our friend came up to us and he was like, What did you think? What did you think? Now, this is my friend. He's clearly quite passionate about this. I don't want to tell him what I really think because I say things badly and I hurt people's feelings. <laughs> So what I'm getting at in a roundabout way is I love this guy so much I had to lie to him. And I said, it was great! Especially the Babadops! And he was like, the what? And I was like, you know, you change your mind, Babada, Babada, I'm first in line, Babada, Babada. About the time I decided to punch out and go to the Metallica world, I realized I had to get a reference point for the show so he would think I was paying attention. And during this whole conversation, Rain, he doesn't notice that my reference point comes from the show's first minute. <laughs> if he has any follow-up questions, I am screwed. <laughs> Luckily, he did not. We all happily ever after. And maybe he was thinking, this is my friend, and I shouldn't hurt his feelings. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I, can't, I just can't do Rock Bell music. It all sounds the same to me. It doesn't matter the groove or the song or anything. And I know, I understand. It's on reminding me. Some people feel the same way about heavy metal. <laughs> That's fine. I'm not here to judge. It's a big world. Everyone has their preferences. <laughs> <laughs> but I just can't do all the man. <laughs> all right, up next, uh, Christmas. Christmas sucks. And uh, when I say Christmas sucks, I should clarify right off the bat. I'm fine with you. Christian holiday where we celebrate Jesus' birth and all this, I absolutely have no problem with that. The version of Christmas I'm bitching about is the same version of Christmas we all bitch about when we say, Christmas has got to commercialize! Yeah. This is one of those things you can say in any size group of people, with any division of race, color, creed, sexual orientation, Coke, Pepsi, Chevy, Ford. <laughs> If you say something like this, you will never offend anyone and you'll never get an argument because you haven't said anything. <laughs> Other examples include, oh, parties are bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, that little parties are bad. This definitely sucks. Yeah, this stuff sucks, sucks, sucks. Or, um, no one in this town can drive. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Every city in the world you go to, nobody can drive except for like, me, whoever the speaker is. <laughs> And then my favorite one of all time, which is, things are the way they used to be. So anyway, yeah, Christmas has gotten too commercialized. We say this, you guys have heard people say this, 
I've said it. Nobody ever does anything about it. Every year we spend eighty thousand dollars on shit nobody needs to give to people we just barely like. <laughs> <laughs> and then people complain too. They're like, I'm so stressed out. I have to do so much baking. I haven't done my Christmas cards yet. I haven't started my Christmas shopping. I'm so stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm not saying if your holiday is more stressful than the other week, you're doing it wrong. Stop! <laughs> Last June, I'm like, oh, June, we had Father's Day, and my wife came up to me, and she was like, what do you want for Father's Day? And I said, you know, we've been together a long time, well, I am confused and terrified by gifts. I don't even really receive gifts well. So on Father's Day, I really just want to sleep in that morning, because I never get to sleep in. So today, I slept in until 10 o'clock in the morning, got up and took a piss, and I went back to bed and slept undisturbed until 2 in the afternoon, and it was awesome. <laughs> Wake up, I made a pot of coffee, and I played my guitar until supper. Yeah. Nice. That's how holidays should be. Nice. Yeah. Then you've got the music. I mean, you know, I mean, again, the sacred songs I'm mostly okay with. The ones I'm complaining about are the retail ones. The ones that sound like, uh, oh, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. This is a classic. That was 40 years old. Um, chestnuts roasting on a leaf Jack Frost nipping at your dick. <laughs> or something, I don't know. Yeah. Or, uh, those? Yeah. I wish it's funny. <laughs> and then there's the new Christmas song, which is Feliz Navidad! Feliz Navidad! Feliz Navidad! Y faro on you, y feliz de dan! I just realized I fucked up the Spanish words there. <laughs> <laughs> it's older than me. It's new. <laughs> and you only hear these songs played in like Walmart and Target and shopping malls and things where they're trying to put you in the Christmas spirit. Which if you didn't know, I'm here to tell you, it's retail industry code for please max out your credit cards. <laughs> so, once upon a time, I was sitting on a bus next to a friend of mine. Casual friend, I don't know her too well. We think of each other fondly, but we're not really well acquainted. And we're stuck in this bus for like an hour and a half. And we were trying to find some conversation to pass the time. And it turns out she's into music. I'm into music. We have something in common here. Well, it turns out music is a very broad landscape. <laughs> and there's a lot of room to disagree upon that. I should have seen this coming. <laughs> but it hit me like a train when she turned around to me and she said, have you heard of this group called Pentatonics? <laughs> <laughs> now when she said this, I thought to myself, she said group, not band. So these assholes are not playing instruments. <laughs> also Pentatonic, I know what a Pentatonic scale is. But the name of the band, or the band, fuck me. But the name of the group is Pentatonics? Oh, uh, fuck me, this is a pun. <laughs> So what I said out loud was, well, <laughs> with a name like that, it's got to be an acapella group. <laughs> she said, it is. And they just released the most amazing Christmas album. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything more about, I can think of anything, but normal, everyday to day, typical interaction. There's not very many things I can think of, for me personally, that would be more unpleasant than listening to a Christmas album by an acapella group band. <laughs> with a pun for a name. <laughs> so, back in the early 90s at some point, I was watching an HBO special with uh, Whoopi Goldberg. I guess it returned her calls. Um, <laughs> and she did this intro 
introductory set, she was kind of acting as the MC, and she did this long set where she talked for like 20 minutes with this very detailed, involved story. And it led up to one large punchline at the end. And I remember watching her going, what is she doing? I haven't seen anyone do this before. That's what I've done for you here tonight. We've written that the material is original, it's all mine. The setup and the style and the format is Whoopi's. Credit to her for being awesome. So thank you for coming out, thank you for laughing, thank you for supporting us and have a good night.